In patients who are active smokers and admitted to the ICU, we often prescribe nicotine replacement therapy, or NRT, to overcome nicotine withdrawal symptoms and reduce agitation, which could potentially lead to increased sedative and analgesic dosing. But what does the evidence say about its effectiveness and safety? Let's find out. In searching the literature, we found several observational studies that examined the use of NRT in ICU patients. We highlight five such studies here, where three have noted adverse outcomes related to its use. These unfavorable consequences encompass an increase in mortality and increase the use of antipsychotic medications, physical restraint, or prolongation of intubation. We also found two pilot randomized controlled trials investigating the use of NRT in smoking patients in the ICU, but these trials included only a small number of patients. Neither trial identified a statistically significant advantage of using NRT in terms of ICU length of stay, the number of ventilator-free days, or mortality at 30 and 90 days. However, the de Young trial did note a statistically significant increase in the number of days alive without delirium in the NRT group. There were two systematic reviews that aimed to evaluate the impact of NRT on mortality, reduction in agitation, and delirium, but they found inconclusive evidence regarding the advantages of NRT use in smoking ICU patients. The reviews concluded that NRT should be utilized on a case-by-case -case basis, after a thorough evaluation of the potential benefits against risks. Another meta-analysis in 2017 revealed an association between NRT use and an increase in delirium, but found no significant differences in other outcomes, such as ICU mortality, hospital mortality, and ICU free days. Based on these observational studies, randomized controlled trials, and systematic reviews, it becomes apparent that the available evidence presents an inconclusive stance regarding the utilization of nicotine replacement therapy in intensive care unit patients who are smokers. Consequently, a prudent approach dictates that decisions regarding the implementation of NRT in such cases should be made on an individual basis, exercising caution and considering the unique circumstances of each patient. If a decision is made to use nicotine replacement therapy, dosing is generally determined based on the smoking intensity of individuals. For patients with a heavy smoking habit exceeding 10 cigarettes per day, an initial higher dose of 21 mg per day is recommended, followed by a gradual tapering regimen. Alternatively, for patients with a lower smoking intensity, the initial dose of NRT begins at 14 mg per day, also with a tapering approach. It is crucial to exercise caution when administering NRT to patients with peptic ulcer diseases, as its use may potentially impede the healing process. Furthermore, in patients with cardiovascular diseases, NRT should be approached with care, due to its potential to elevate heart rate and blood pressure. Additionally, it should be taken into consideration that nicotine may exhibit delayed clearance in cases of moderate to severe renal and hepatic impairment. Moreover, one important precaution to note is the necessity to remove the patch prior to undergoing an MRI scan, ensuring the safety of the procedure due to the aluminum content. Thank you for watching. Please visit www.icureach.com for more educational videos and resources.